It was full steam ahead on the island of Sodor. All the engines were running on time. They wanted to finish their work quickly, because tonight was Halloween. The engines loved seeing the children in their Halloween costumes. And the engines loved to hear tales of ghostly engines and scary steam trains. That evening, Sir Topham Hatt came to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas and Emily, you must go to the smelter's yard, he said. An important delivery of iron must be collected right away. Yes, sir, they puffed. Percy thought the smelter's yard was spooky. He was worried about his friends. Look out for ghosts, he whistled nervously. It is Halloween. There's no such thing as ghosts, Thomas said cheerfully. It's just silly make-believe, added Emily. And they steamed off to the smelter's yard. The sun was setting, and it was getting dark. Imagine being scared of Halloween, puffed Thomas. Or the smelter's yard, sniffed Emily. Pa, added Thomas. Thomas and Emily enjoyed feeling brave. But when they got to the smelter's yard, it was very spooky. Oh my, whispered Emily. Oh dear, hissed Thomas. They puffed slowly through the piles of jagged steel and twisted scrap. The air grew hotter and the smoke grew thicker. Ari and Bert were lurking nearby. The two diesels saw the chance to scare a couple of steamies. When Thomas and Emily rolled by, they moaned and groaned. It sounded spooky. What was that? snapped Emily. You said there was no such thing as ghosts. Silly make-believe you said, gasped Thomas. Suddenly a freight car began to shudder and shake. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas. Help! wailed Emily. It's a ghost! Let's get away from here! They didn't know Ari and Bert had been bumping the flatbed's buffers. The two naughty diesels were having great fun. Thomas and Emily pulled up to the smelting shed. They gasped at the ghostly shadows and fizzing sparks. Their wheels felt as if they were frozen, but they had to go inside. I hope the ghost hasn't gone in there, quaked Thomas. Me too, quivered Emily. And they both rolled slowly into the smelting shed. Inside, chains clanked and strange shadows danced across the walls. Must be brave, must be brave, Thomas puffed. But it was spooky. Emily was turning around, ready to shun some freight cars. Suddenly, a great whoosh of sparks lit up the shed. Bust my buffers, cried Emily. Emily was scared. She didn't notice the huge white tarp. It fell, covering her from funnel to footplate. The ghost! It's got me! She steamed away as fast as her pistons could pump. Thomas thought Emily was the ghost, and he raced out of the smelting shed. The ghost is after me, cried Thomas. Ari and Bert thought Emily was the ghost too, and they raced away. Thomas was right behind them, and Emily was right behind Thomas. Emily cried. The ghost has got me! Harry, Bert, Thomas, and Emily raced towards Tidmouth Sheds. 
Pitman's sheds was quiet and peaceful. All the engines were fast asleep. Thomas's whistle soon woke them up. It's Thomas, cried Percy. Something must be wrong. Suddenly, he saw Thomas, Harry, and Bert racing into the yards. Stop! he cried. Harry, Bert, and Thomas applied their brakes. They stopped just in time. The ghost is after us, whistled Thomas. Percy was scared. But just then, Emily raced under a signal and the tarp flew off. That's no ghost, said Percy. That's Emily. The engines didn't feel scared anymore, but they did feel foolish. Sir Topham had arrived wearing his pajamas. What is all this fuss and bother, he boomed. It has caused confusion and delay. But, sir, cried Thomas, the flatbeds were rattling. And we heard moaning, said Emily. And groaning, added Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt looked at Harry and Bert. Do you know anything about this? He asked sternly. It was us, sir, Bert mumbled. For your punishment, you go back and collect the iron at once, said Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, sir, said Harry and Bert, and they rumbled away. Whenever Thomas and Emily went back to the smelter's yard, they knew there was nothing to be scared of. After all, there is no such thing as ghosts. It was all silly make-believe. <laughs>